Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill Live of this Sunday morning. You know, the economic issues continue to be the most pressing issues voters say they're concerned about. The recent rulings out of the Supreme Court are also key factors for voters coming up this November. We want to welcome in our political panel this morning. Chuck Rocha is a Democratic strategist and former senior advisor to Bernie Sanders. Charmaine Yost is a Republican strategist and former head of Americans United for Life. Good to see both of you. Uh, at the beginning of this program, uh, we were talking to Matt McDonald uh, about the economy, and you know, James Carville's famous line that it's the economy stupid always resonates, and I think it always resonates because it's always true. We're on a clock right now for these midterm elections. Chuck, how long do Democrats have left before they could have a tangible change in this economy right now, which they can present to the voters in November as signs of progress? What we're seeing in focus groups in states we're working in all across the country is voters are tired of people saying we're fighting for and they want delivery too. Mm -hmm. They want to see what's happening now. And you make a great point is that time is clicking. We're just over 100 days left. <laughs> Gas prices are at the heart of many things that we're seeing. Gas and groceries are the message of the day. And Democrats are quickly, I think that's why you're seeing uh, action in Congress right now to do something on Build Back Together. Even if it's something very scaled back to say that Democrats have delivered X, Y, or Z to take on this inflation problem. And Charmaine, this puts Republicans in kind of this odd spot of while they are pointing to these problems in the economy, for political reasons, they don't necessarily want to see too much of a change in what's going on right now. Could This could be a windfall for Republicans if this economy is still stuck in the mud in November. Do you know, I've, I've rarely seen a moment like this in my political career. Right now, Republicans don't really have to do any kind of heavy lifting because the moms and dads across this country all over the place are posting pictures of themselves filling up their gas tanks, hitting over $100 a gallon, or $100 to fill up. It seems so, like $100 a gallon. It feels sometimes. that yeah. way. Like right now, you can't even fill up your car because, because you're reaching limits. So you've got people posting all this on social media. Mm -hmm. That's that kind of viral grassroots um, anxiety mm -hmm. that Americans are feeling, that parents in particular, as we're in the summer season of traveling across the country, that's your previous guest said that this kind of thing is baked at this point. It's only going to get worse through July and August. But, you know, one of the things we heard from the president in the last couple of days is that it is not just the economy that people are going to go vote on, Chuck. Obviously, this decision from the Supreme Court on abortion is uh, resounding through the country right now. There was a significant decision on, on gun rights in this country. Can the White House pivot this conversation away from the economic strains that are going on right now? Because the president said the other day that he doesn't think that Republicans are counting on the voice of women who support abortion rights of what that impact could be in November. I think it's really important. I think you're going to see them try to do that. And, and the problem Democrats have, the problem we have in our party is, uh, is uh, excitement within our base. We have to get more people out. And then normally in an off-year election, when the president's not on the ballot, you see Republicans show up at a higher margin already. Mm -hmm. we, we got the headwinds of the first year of a Democratic president, the headwinds of right after redistricting. So everything is pulling against the Democrats. So we have to do something to mobilize and motivate our voters. And we think maybe that the choice issue will be it with folks who normally wouldn't participate. Does it matter whether or not that excitement and energy comes from anger over what's going on right now or enthusiasm from this administration, you, which appears to be waning in your own party? You won't party. enthusiasm because sometimes on the left of the party, if you get too much anger, folks may just stay home because they're frustrated. That's mm -hmm. what the fear is in my party. All right, let me flip that around the Republican side right now because we saw Donald Trump in Alaska the other day pout, touting you know, what he said were accomplishments of the Trump administration legacy in the abortion issue. This is something that you worked on f for years right now. But can you translate this into a policy in your party that goes beyond limiting abortion rights? Are we going to hear from Republicans about what they will do as far as supporting single mothers, uh, supporting prenatal care, supporting all the other things that go along when abortions in some states in this country are not going to be allowed. 
Well, you know, the pro-life movement has been doing that for years, and that's one of the reasons we're in the position that we are right now, is because there is a much higher level of support for this decision than Democrats and the White House seems to understand. Listen, I listened to the president's speech, and I heard him say over and over again, women think this, women think that. And the problem for the Democrats as they go into the midterms is they're assuming that all women are with them on this issue, and yet polling time after time after time shows that women are majority pro-life. One of the things we saw recently was kind of a surprise was a bipartisan deal on guns. It's not everything everybody wanted, um, but in a time of uh, having bipartisanship be incredibly rare in this city, we did see remarkably quick action on this. Chuck, was this just a one-time thing, or is this something that these two sides could build on? Well, there's one thing that's been made clear is that if, if you're not tired of one mass shooting, there will be another one soon after. And Republicans in the Senate wanted to take this smartly off the table so they didn't have TV commercials run against them. So it was time to do something. This was the bare minimum that we could probably get done. But one of the things people had always said about the Republicans is that they would not go down this road because they feared the wrath of the NRA and then the pro-gun rights. Is. That largely hasn't happened so far. Could this open a door for Republicans to be open to further action on this issue? Well, it's it's rare that we agree on things, but mm -hmm. you know, and I know I know that's not where we're supposed to be on this, but you know, well, you I can agree on things <laughs> if you agree on it. Well, <laughs> you know, this was a moment, a political moment where something needed to be done. So that's the best of politics when you can come in and say, where's where's the eighty percent where mm -hmm. we can move forward on something? All right. Well, uh, one of the things we are looking at also is when we get to these uh, uh, midterm elections, we could be dealing with a radically different look of the Congress uh, coming up in the uh, in the next term. So you can if, take uh, that to the bank. Well, yeah. If, <laughs> if either the House or the Senate gets flipped, uh, you know, this could be a very interesting uh, uh, second half of his term for President Joe Biden. But we remember. Both Barack Obama and Bill Clinton lost control of their congresses and were able to uh, get reelected re into a second term. We thank you so much both thank for coming you. into our uh, studios this thank Sunday you. morning.